Oh yeah. Oh ho, ho, ho. Vertical. We're in brown town now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Got the brown on the rooster tail on the fly rod. What's up all you addicts out there? Before we get into this video, don't go anywhere because three of you won a special prize from our last spring merch drop. In a previous video, we announced that we were gonna pick three winners from the comments. Here is the three winners, one, two, three. You just won a prize pack from our spring drop. We're gonna give you one of each plug, one of each bead. We're gonna give you a whole bunch of stuff from this drop, so congrats to the three winners out there. And don't forget, if you're watching our videos, drop comments, thumbs up the videos. It really helps us on YouTube, and you never know when you just may win something if you drop a comment. Also, another exciting, you guys are probably wondering why I'm standing in this, in this room right here. Addicted is expanding again because of all of you. So we're gonna be opening a little showroom. This isn't gonna be like a retail store, but it will be an opportunity for you to come see things from Addicted, hang out. We're gonna have it open on a limited hour basis, but do a pan in here, Colt, so they can see. This is gonna be Addicted in here, boys and girls. So we're gonna, from this little front area, we're gonna build a little showroom, have like a bunch of apparel you can check out. You can actually come like see and touch all of our products with your own hands. So it's coming soon. We're not there yet. We're probably, I don't know what, Colt, a month out, I would guess. Yeah, it's I bet we're a month out before we're really gonna be able to open it to the public. But I gotta say thanks to all you addicts out there because if it wasn't for your support, we wouldn't be able to do any of this. We wouldn't be able to keep expanding. Little Colt here wouldn't even have a job if it wasn't for you guys. So. Thank you guys so much for all the support. It's been crazy to see where Addicted's going. We're not done yet. We still got a lot of goals to accomplish, a lot of things we want to do. We're going to keep bringing you guys along for the ride and keep rewarding you addicts out there for supporting us as much as we can. So thanks again. Let's get into this video. It's another video from Chile, and we'll see you on the river. giant piece of petrified wood. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Wow, look at this thing. Holy cow, that's cool. From days gone past. The old burnt bark on the back end. That is so freaking cool. What a cool start to the day with a giant piece of petrified wood. Too big to take home. We're gonna leave it here for somebody else to enjoy. But welcome everybody to another Addicted Fishing video. Today we're combining two of my favorite things to do one of my favorite things, and that's casting spinners with a fly rod. I've never really done this before, but this is a perfect setting for it, the perfect river. We're here in Patagonia, there's lots of fish. Let's go see if it works. So, as I said already, our goal for today is to combine two different techniques that don't belong together to try to catch some of these Patagonia trout. I've had a lot of luck on the spinners lately, but one thing that's been in the back of my mind, and my curiosity is getting the best of me, is if it would work to put one of these tiny rooster tails, what is this one, this is a 1 8 rooster tail on the end of my fly line, and strip it in front of these fish and see if it's gonna work. So, let's get dialed up, let's get tied on, let's go catch one. Comment below, guys, I wanna see if you think we can actually do this. This is something that I've never tried before. It's very interesting, but we're in quite a great environment to test this theory out. Off goes the fly, on goes the spinner. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, so one thing I know for sure is this is gonna kinda be a pain in the ass to cast, but I have a pretty big fly rod here. So I think we'll be able to make do. I got an eight weight fly rod, which is a little heavy than you would typically want for doing the, oh, oh my God, already had one. Oh yeah! Second go! Oh. <laughs> He's a tail walk! Oh my god! This thing is a wild animal. Third cast! Oh yeah. Oh heck yeah. What a cool fish. Come take a look at this everybody. What a killer take. 
and a beautiful fish. Okay, let's get this crazy beast back to his home. Okay, bye guy. Woohoo! That didn't take very long. This is gonna be an interesting day. Okay, so that didn't take very long. This is the perfect kind of setting to do this too. I got a really great downstream current. I'm able to swing this thing in. And why I was kind of, why this idea hit me, why I had this epiphany was because as I was fishing this creek a couple days ago, there he is, fish number two. As I was fishing this creek a couple days ago, I was having very good luck with the spinner. And what was happening is I was getting hit a lot, but as soon as I would let that spinner fall, I'd hook a fish. So boom, light bulb went off and I thought, Stripping these things would work perfectly. That buzz from that spinner and then the way it falls in that dying presentation makes for a very, very hard situation for a fish to pass up. And as we've seen already, my theory is not mistaken. There he is. Oh yeah, oh God, he's another tail walker. Oh my God, what a flip. Woo! Guys, there's no telling what's gonna happen today. Fish number two, another beauty rainbow. As we saw in that very first Patagonia video I put out, there are some monster browns in this creek. So, so it's gonna be very interesting throughout the day to see what we pull out of this creek. Later, bud. All right, fish number two. Let's find a brown. So I'm doing a very typical fly technique here, like I'm swinging a fly for steelhead. Swinging this thing across, I'm two-stepping down through the run, making about the same distance cast with each cast. And then as I come back into this soft water, I'm stripping this thing in. And I think it's that, that pulsing sensation that this fish is seeing, or that the fish are seeing is what's getting them to react. They're seeing that spinner, they're seeing it go forward and die, forward and die. And it's causing them to chase it down and want to kill it. Oh, there was a bite. I know we're in Brown Town right now. I know there's a monster brown hiding somewhere under this arbolas. That's Spanish for trees. Oh, there he is. Oh, man. Dang it, that felt like a good one. I'm gonna leave it in front of him. There we go. That might get the job done. giant gnarly storm coming in guys. Started the day with some really nice weather and it's getting ugly now. Just in time for the spinner brigade. All right, good first hole everybody. Before I get too far out in the current, we're gonna head back. Let's jump down to the next spot. All right, what is gonna happen? Let's see the comments below. What do you guys think is about to happen? Am I gonna catch a giant brown? Because we're almost into brown town here, I'll tell you that much. Give it a little, little ginger on it. Get a little mustard. Going over here. With the fly line, it's almost perfect the way you can direct this spinner. I'm like throwing my fly, or I'm throwing the spinner over here. I'm throwing a big belly in the line and getting a nice mend into the middle of the current. And it's creating that perfect angle for that spinner to come out from the bank. Almost as if I'm like fishing it from a boat. It's pretty darn cool. It's actually a pretty effective method here. Okay, pretty quiet, pretty quiet start to super hole here. Making my way down. Again, I'm just kind of working with my feet here. I'm not trying to get too big for my boots on the casting. I'm not trying to cast super duper far and make it a pain in the butt for myself. I'm just getting the cast that I can and super stealthy moving down this bank. The water is extremely clear and so fishing this, this method from top to bottom of the hole like this isn't always the best. A lot of times you'll want to work from the bottom of the hole up in a situation like this where you have clear water. So. If anything, we'll work down through this. Might have to switch it up to a fly and see if they both work today.
This time's color of choice, the fire tiger. We've had some incredible luck just spinner fishing with a similar spinner while we've been here in Chile. So I got a smaller one, should cast nicely. And we got a nice Ripley hole behind me with a little more movement, something that actually has some current that's gonna make this thing work a little bit better. So let's see what happens. Okay, here it goes. Oh, there he is, got him. Just a little guy, but he's a fish. It's a fish. We've gone a little stale for a while, you guys. I was starting to wonder if maybe it's the technique that's not working, or if it's the spinner color or whatever, but we switched colors. We got a little baby guy on the line. Little baby guy on the line. We'll take it, though. Beauty, little rainbow. Let's get him back. Bye-bye. Sweet. Here he goes, oh my God, that's a big one. That is by far the biggest fish of the day. He's checking line, Jesus, Moses, that's a good fish. Submarine in me right now. Oh, that's a good fish. Super strong. Oh, wow. Damn sure the best one of the day. It's a day of the rainbows here. Wow. That is exactly what we were looking for. Holy cripes. Look at that. What a stunner. Wow. On the fly rod with the rooster tail. <laughs> rooster tail on the fly rod. Some call it crazy. I call it a good idea. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That was a great take, you guys. Just low, long belly spay. Just a big belly in the line there, and it just smashed it. Oh, there he is, there he is. Got him, got him. I'm getting into the sweet spot, you guys. I think I found the sweet spot. I'm just getting a nice low belly swing down below me. Right when it gets into the middle of the river, I'm just giving it these little jerks. Little jerk, 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 jerk. And nobody home that time. Go figure. So far, the method is a good idea, you guys. If you're having a slow day of fly fishing, if the fish aren't eating bugs, if stuff's not moving around and, and cooperating with you, maybe take a tiny little 1 8 or 16th rooster tail in your box. Could save your day. So my methodology here is I'm going left and right. It seems to me the shallowest part of the river is right here in the middle. And so a lot of these fish will sit on the edges right on the edge in these foam lines that are created by that slow water. And that's where the, a lot of the food is concentrated. So I think what's happening is as I go down river, I'm taking a couple steps at a time, I'm going back and forth, and I'm working both sides of this ledge. And it seems to be working. Cast, giant town, we're in G town. Got him. Oh, that was a good take. Oh, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. vertical. It's a little bit smaller fish, but it's a fish. Another rainbow. My goodness. Now, this river has a ton of brown trout in it, so I think what we're going to do, we're just going to keep this episode going until we finally get a brown trout. But for some reason, it might be the presentation, once again, that I'm going actually uh, um, from up river and I'm swinging it down to these fish. That might be the reason why we're not getting any browns because every brown I hooked last time, I was casting straight up and ripping it down river into the fish's face. So it seems to me that it's the water type, water type and water speed. This, this perfect kind of spinner water is where this is working best, where you'd almost want to sling, swing a streamer or use some sort of like 
wooly bugger presentation. If it's not working, it might be a good idea to go to the spinner. Got him. Yep. Do I? No, he's gone. Dang it, that was a brown, everybody. I could see the golden belly on that thing. I missed him. Brown town. We're in brown town. Okay, I got some wood structure in the river here. And all I know for certain is that brown trout love wood. It's been an awesome, awesome successful day so far. I hate to put any limitations on it or expectations, but it would be cool to find a big brown trout. We got the right lure on, that's for sure. This might be one of my very new favorite ways of fishing. Got him. Oh yeah. Oh geez, oh my, oh he's making a mess. Went through my line. Went through my line, this little critter is making a mess. Come on back here. Okay, we're good, we're safe. Got him. Just a little mini guy again. All right. There it is, there it is everybody, got the brown. Got the brown, right under the tree limb. I whipped a little cast right over here underneath this tree. The thing absolutely smashed it. I knew there was gonna be a brown next to that tree. Oh baby, we got the brown. We're in brown town now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Woo! Wow, we got him. Got the brown on the rooster tail, on the fly rod. Mission accomplished. All right, little guy. Thanks for the help. And thanks for the love. <laughs> okay, we'll see if we can reenact that because that was a killer take. I messed up, I didn't have the camera on, but we got a brown and we got some really good holes down below us. Let's do this. Okay, found our Sanu Brown Town. Got some big wood, fast water, a lot of good structure for these fish. And above all, room for me to cast. Oh man, that was a really good one. Just smashed it. See if he'll eat again. Got him, got him. Different fish. That's a rainbow. Just a little guy again. But we're looking for the monster. Just gotta weed through him. Okay, everybody. We got another perfect setting for a big brown. Let's see if he's home. I'm gonna try to start right at the top of this bush and slowly work my way down, but I know somewhere along this line and right in between the heaviest piece of that bush, there's gonna be some sort of fish. And I would imagine with the kind of cover I'm looking at, it should be a brown. So let's see if you make a lion man out of me. Oh my God, that was a big fish. Got him. Not the same fish, not the same fish though. There's a bunch of them in there. Oh boy. Again, weeding through them. The one, the fish that missed the spinner at the first shot was giant. This one is not what hit it the first time. Later, little dude. We got bigger fish to fry. Dang, that was a really big fish that missed it that first cast. Let's get a little bit closer. See if we can't coax something out of there. Nope, couldn't fool him again. Crap. Man, that was a good fish. Right here close. Went to go cast again, and he nailed it. Really nice brown. Really nice brown, he's got me all bent up. Oh, really nice brown and heavy current. 
Oh no, it's a rainbow. Rainbow with a golden hue. What a great fish. You can see that one kind of missing his maxillary. He's been caught a couple times. Resilient fish. All right, the best part of the hole is yet to come. Stay with me, everybody. What is gonna happen here? I might argue to say this might be more effective than using a spinning rod. There we go, this is it, get ready. Get ready, everyone. Oh, there, there he is, yeah! Yeah, yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Babe Ruth it. Oh, that's a good fish. That's the best one today. That's a good fish. Oh, wow. He's got this eight weight all bent up. Oh, what is it? Another really, really quality rainbow, guys. Wow, what a good fish. Man, these things are like baby steelhead, I swear. And they eat just like it. Wow. Gorgeous. Oh, well, didn't get a good look at that one, but I bet we'll catch another one. Here it goes. Okay, here we go. I got a really good feeling as we move down to the tail out of this hole, you guys. It's dark, it's deep, and it looks fishy. Got him, got him. Very next cast. I haven't seen this one yet. What is this? Ding, thing. It barely hit the water and we had another one. Oh yeah. That's, what, oh, he's gone. Literally jumped off the hook. Okay. We need to change camera angles. We're getting a bad glare on the camera, but that's okay. Cause I'm going to cast left and watch this. Oh, there he is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Got a lot of line out right now. A lot of line out. Oh, I know there's a, there's a solid brown hiding in here somewhere. I can feel it. But no doubt, you guys, we are crushing them right now. One of the best days of trout fishing I've had yet. And in the most unconventional way. Bye-bye. Oh, dude, I just, my stomach is in a knot. I know, but as we keep going down the river here, guys, I've been catching a lot of fish. Normally we don't usually even try to catch a spinny on an episode, but I just have a crazy feeling as we get lower and lower in this river that we are gonna find an absolute giant brown. And I'm very excited about it. The way these things are hitting this thing right now is unbelievable. Okay, say we did fairly well in that hole. Let's keep moving on. Okay, I don't know about you ladies and gentlemen, but I have a sneaking suspicion that something good's about to happen over here. What a perfect spot for a big trout to lay. Oh! Something chased it as soon as it hit the water. I think I need to lay in the cast a little further up. Well, the magic lure and the last of my tippet is royally stuck in that bush over there. This is only one choice. back in action and now we're wet wading because no point in putting the waders back on. Oh that's it. That's the cast. Oh oh okay we're doing the under the tree trick everyone. That's it.
Well, everybody, I would say after about a roughly 40 fish day that we've proven that the rooster tail connected to a fly rod is a great way to catch trout. We caught some amazing fish today. If you guys want to see a trophy, trophy trout, the next episode coming out, you guys need to tune in for where we go and catch one of the biggest brown trout I've ever caught in my life. So be on the lookout for those videos. Go back and watch all the other ones that have been posted from this chili trip. Until next time, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there. Mm -hmm.